Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to another session of Teams in 20. Today, we're going to be talking about Loop. And we've had lots and lots of requests about Loop. Uh, and Daria, who's going to be our amazing presenter today, who you'll be familiar with if you, if you join us every week, is going to be taking us through a part of Loop. Um, she tells me that there is a lot to this, a lot more than we can fit into 20 minutes. So as I said, this, today's session is about Loop. And our amazing Daria is back, and she's going to be talking about loop components, uh, which is just one element of that loop uh, functionality. So I'm going to hand straight over to Daria. Um, I know you've got a lot to go through. I know this is going to be really quick, so uh, over to you. So first of all, hello, everyone. Uh, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, my name is Daria. I'm a cloud solution architect, and I'm aligned to modern work. Uh, I think I might have previously met some of you during the Protect Your Time with Viva Insight session, during the Wellbeing session a while ago. Um, I'm very happy to be back and to introduce you to, to Loop Components or to get you looped in. I really love this joke. I'll never stop uh, saying it to other people. Um, and I'm also coming in as a Loop enthusiast, um, and I really I really love this, uh, this application. So how today is going to work, I will start with a quick overview of Loop Components and then swap to a live demo environment and, and showcase a tool. Please note this is a session on Loop Components specifically, which is one of the three key parts of the Loop app. There are so, so, so many things that we can talk about when it comes to Loop Components and to the Loop app. Um, so uh, putting this in 20 minutes, it's a real challenge. But there will also be a session on the Loop app later on, uh, during which we'll cover pages, workspaces, as well as some, uh, some admin details. But let's get straight into it. So first of all, what are Loop Components? And prior to that, if you can thumbs up me, if you've used Loop Components until now, it would be great to see uh, what your experience was like. Great, I see some thumbs up coming through. That's great. So first and foremost, what are they? How do we define them? Well, they are live interactive objects that stay in sync across all the places that they're shared within, and they're embedded across M365 canvases to provide real-time collaboration. So when we speak about them, they represent the first feature of the Microsoft Loop app, which is available on Teams apps on Windows, on Mac, on Linux, iOS, Android, and only in Teams chat for now, uh, please note here that channels do not support this feature as of now, but this is coming up soon. So obviously with all the tools, with all the documents and files and links that our team needs every single day, it's really easy to feel overwhelmed sometimes. So Loop Components and Teams chat offer this new way to ideate, to create, um, to make decisions together as a team, and to do that in a centralized space in an application that we use a lot during our work days. So we can send a component, uh, we can see a table, a task list, or a paragraph, depending on the type of project that we work on, depending on the size of the team that we work on. And everyone in the chat can edit in line if we give them access to, and also see the changes as they're made. One of the questions that I usually think of whenever I speak about any product or whenever I decide to use any new product as a consumer is what is the value of that product? And thinking about the purpose of this feature of, of the loop components and what the, the value added to your day-to-day -day work activities is, first of all, you get tasks done faster together as a team, which is really imperative in the world that we live in. You can crowdsource an agenda, you can track a group's action items, uh, you can take notes collectively, and these are just a few scenarios which are made easier using the loop components tool. Second of all, you can share these components. So in this release, you can share loop components into different Teams chats, Recipients can edit from wherever they are and see updates instantly, no matter where the changes were made, whether you used your device or whether you used your phone, your mobile phone. But according to these access policies, you can choose prior to sending that loop component to someone else. And last, you can start in the chat and you can build from everywhere. So every component you create in from the Teams chat is automatically saved to a file in OneDrive. So you might begin collaborating in the chat, for example, then later move on to an, an office.com file where you have a larger visual space for editing, or you can continue in Outlook, or you can continue in Whiteboard, and you can add as many components as you'd like. Really rushing through this, I'll stop sharing the PowerPoint presentation and I will share with you my screen. I hope everyone can see it. I will not be able to see the chat, so any questions that you might ask throughout 
the next 10 minutes, I will be able to answer them after I finish or Joe, if wonderful oh, Joe, she's going to help me. Perfect. I can see okay. your screen and I'll keep an eye on the chat. So amazing. <laughs> so as mentioned before, loop components have been created to serve this purpose of collaboration, right? So for this reason, because that's the purpose of it, it has been integrated with one of the applications that we use the most throughout the day, which is Teams, wonderful Teams. Now, for the purpose of this live demonstration, I am using a demo environment in my demo account, and I'm accessing the Microsoft Teams application on my web browser. I've done that by going to my portal.office.com, where I see all the applications available under my account, and I am in Teams right now. First thing first, I'll go to my group chat with Adele and Deborah. I'm working together with my colleagues on a project and we want to keep track of our tasks in real time. And we want to do that specifically in Teams as this is our preference. So using this group chat, I will start with a blank message right here and I will click on the loop component item icon, which is this one. And now I can create a loop. I have a few, several options I can go for here, whether I want a bulleted list, a numbered list, a voting table. It really depends on the project that I work for. But as I've mentioned to you, I want to keep track of the current tasks and the upcoming one. So I'll coming, I'll be going for a task list. I will add a project title. So I'll put sales forecasting July 2023. And I will start adding tasks. Review consumption data. That's the first task. And I will assign this to Adele and I will give her. That's a quite a difficult task, so I'll give her until mid-August to do that. Then schedule weekly spelling Daria calls. And I will assign this to myself. My name is Alan for today. And this is not very complicated, and I'll give myself until next week to do that. And I can keep on adding tasks as we go. I will then continue with my scheduling with, with scheduling every single task that, I, that we have to accomplish. And I can keep on adding those and update this loop component as we go. So I'll send, first of all, I've mentioned that loop components can be shared with other people as well, right? They can be copied and pasted from this chat that I'm with Adele and Deborah into a different chat with another colleague. So if I want to make sure that this component can be shared with someone else that we want to collaborate with, maybe we have other people joining the chat uh, at some point in the future, or maybe I want my manager to, to have visibility, I need to choose the access options. If I click on the arrow here, I have a few options. So first of all, the anyone option is not available. That's because the cross tenant collaboration has not been uh, released yet, but this is something that will be coming up. Um, so for now, I'll focus on people in my organizations and people currently in this chat. If I go for the first option, everyone will be able to access and edit this loop component, no matter who they are in my organization. If I click on people currently in this chat, only people that I'm working with right now and coming and people that will be added to the chat will be able to view and edit. Obviously, when I choose one of these two options, these are the most used options. You'll come across them. I can also go for editing or viewing. So if I do not want them to contribute in any way to my loop component, I just want them to have visibility of it. I can go for can view. But for the purpose of this demonstration, I really need their input. So I will click on can edit and I will apply this to them. This should work faster, but my machine has been acting up today. Apologies. And I will send this loop component to my chat. So as I've mentioned to you, for the purpose of this demonstration, I've decided to allow anyone in the organization to be able to add this, to access this loop component. And the reason that I did that is because we expect more people to join our team. So it happens quite often um, to be part of really, really large group chats and easily get lost within the hundreds of messages sent. And even if you send this loop component as a text in your, in your chat, you can easily lose it if people comment a lot on that specific chat. But a way to avoid this happening is to click on the three ellipses here and to pin it. And now this loop component has been pinned to my chat right under the title. A thing to note here, you cannot pin multiple loop components. So if I have pinned this one and I'm sending another one, I need to prioritize and decide which one I want to be at the top of my chat. And I can always click on that no matter how many messages are sent to that specific chat and get back to it. Now, this can be updated in real time as I've mentioned to you. So if I've 
schedule the weekly calls with the teams. I could just click on here and this is going to be cut off the list. So everyone will be able to see the progress that we're making. I can also change the due dates according to potential changes that we might come across to. So again, it's really easy to edit it. Now, if I want to send this to a different chat, I can just simply copy the comment, the, the component. Um, I'll go to my chat with Megan because Megan is my manager and I just want to send this to her as well. In this case, because I've chosen people in the organization, I do not need to modify any access options, so I can just send it further to Megan. And she's now able to edit and view all the things that we are planning as a team. Now, if you're wondering where this loop component is saved, it's saved automatically. The question is where? It's in your OneDrive, it's in your files, and you will see a folder called MS Teams Chat Files. So if I go back to my office.com portal, click on the ellipsis and go to OneDrive. Obviously, if you're using the desktop version, you'll go to your file explorer right here. But in this case, I'm going to my files, going to Microsoft Teams chat files, and now you'll be able to see the loop component that I have added just a minute ago alongside other loop components that I've created so far. So this is obviously, this is where you're gonna find a list of all the loop components that you have sent in your Teams chat files and not only. Now, if I go back to this one, and I let's say I want a larger visual space to edit this loop component, maybe the Teams chat is not enough for me, I can click on the title, and this will take me to my Microsoft 365 portal. I can also decide to share this loop component from here by clicking on the upper right corner button and add a name, a group, and an email, and also a message about this component. I can give edit and view permissions as well. And I can do that from this space as well. So all in all, um, this is how the Microsoft Loop Components work in, in Teams. The last thing that I wanted to show you is the whiteboarding option. So as you may know, that you're, you will be able to create Loop Components in the whiteboard application. I think this is rolling out in July 2023, but I do not want to give you false information, so I'll need to double check on that. Uh, the last time I checked the roadmap, it's coming up soon. So if you go to the whiteboard app, I have installed it and pinned it to my left-hand navigation bar. As of now, I can copy any loop component to a whiteboard. So I'll just go back to my chat with Megan. I'll copy this loop component. I'll move to whiteboard, go to the brainstorming one, and then I can just paste this here. It's really, really small right now, but let's, come on, awesome. And I can keep on editing in the whiteboard app. Also, if I'm using the whiteboard during a meeting, I can always have my team editing this in real time. And as I've mentioned, this will come up. You will be able to create this loop component in, in the whiteboard app specifically. So you're going to be seeing a lot of Daria over the next few weeks. <laughs> so next week we have got Microsoft List and we've got Stream. Uh, we're going to do a session on managing your data, a hot topic at the moment. Uh, I've got a colleague that is an absolute expert on design thinking. She's going to give some ideas on how you might want to do some future planning. And then I'm going to take you through an introduction to Copilot. Now, some of our customers might be on this preview. Um, but there is a lot of discussion about Copilot at the moment. We just want to tell you what it is, what it isn't, and uh, yeah, give you a bit of insight of what we're doing behind the scenes. So thank you so much. That is it from us this week. Thank you so much for joining and hope to see you here next week.